My name is Adam Papoy from CloudPeace. I'm a senior software engineer and I'm working a lot with Chef and Jenkins while automating operations related tasks. You can reach me on Twitter wwh underline tw and on email appapai at cloudbeast.com. In this demo, I will show you the Chef Tracking plugin in action. <coughs> we have Jenkins, a great CI tool which can build for us. And we have a great centralized infrastructure management tool, Chef, which can enforce specific policies on our servers. Jenkins has the fingerprint feature, which keeps track of all the files it archived. It is using MD5 hash as a fingerprint. The Chef tracking plugin is built on top of the deployment notification plugin and lets Chef users track when, where, what files are deployed and trigger other activities after deployments have happened. It basically enables an API endpoint in Jenkins, which can be used by Chef to send back reports. We do this by running Chef Hunter Jenkins inside Chef, which monitors Chef's activities and find out which files have been updated. The custom handler submits the information to Jenkins in the end, and this Jenkins plugin takes it from there and adds appropriate information to the Jenkins fingerprints if there was any. This is very useful when developers want to know when their code or artifact was deployed. They can track the release process without asking the ops team about the status of the release. They can clearly see if it has been deployed to testing, staging or production. What's more, they can see exactly where it was deployed. In our example, let's say we're building a Java application. As a developer, we are just pushing our locally tested code to a Git repository and waiting Jenkins to finish the build. But at some point, we want to know if it has been already released or not. The old-fashioned way is to get up and go to an ops guy and ask him about the status of your release. The new way is to check your fingerprint page of your build artifact and see if it has been released or not. Some are building custom tools to provide the same functionality, but if you're a developer who is working closely with Jenkins, the easiest way to achieve this is using this plugin. We will be using Vagrant. If you don't know Vagrant, Vagrant is a free open source software for creating and configuring virtual development environments. It can be seen as a wrapper around virtualization software such as VirtualBox, KVM. So in other words, you can run a virtual server in an encapsulated environment on your local machine. Just a quick side note, I'd love to mention how great open source software is. While I was setting up the webinar environment a few weeks ago, I encountered a lot of issues. Vagrant plugins were not working well, a few bugs here and there, but since all is open source, I just fixed them, sent a pull request to the developers, and those fixes got merged almost immediately. So, let's see our Vagrant config. <clears throat> the first line in our Vagrant config is the Bergshelf setup. Bergshelf, let's say, is a cookbook versioning tool. In the next line, we enable the Omnibus plugin. The Vagrant Omnibus will ensure that Chef is installed on our virtual machine. This is a pretty easy way to install Chef in a Vagrant box. No need to specify how to install it, just add this line to the config. It will grab the latest Chef version. You can of course spin to any specific version. We can define the host name of our box, which will be posted to our Jenkins as well. We have to define which image to use. We are using here a default Ubuntu Precise 64-bit image. In this demo. We want to use Chef Zero here, which is a simple, easy run, fast start, in-memory Chef server for testing and solo purposes. So this background file configures two servers, an in-memory Chef server and a client, which will be our Tomcat server. In the next line, we tell Chef Zero where to look for cookbooks. It is in the root of this directory. We are forwarding the ports in order to make the box accessible from the outside, so we can check if our traceability war indeed gets deployed to our Tomcat server. So we forward the 8808 to 8080 inside the box. And of course we have to define what chef recipes to use. So we, want, we would like to add the webinar cookbook to our server. And this is all you need to know about Vagrant Config. Let's see our cookbook. We will use one recipe in our cookbook. In our cookbook, we define what we want to be installed on our server. We don't have to define how. As George already told us, Chef uses a pretty nice DSL language. So let's see how our cookbook looks like. First, we have to ensure that the make package is installed, which is required for the Chef Hunter Jenkins gem. Then, we install the Chef Hunter Jenkins gem, which is also required. 
This gem overrides the default chat handler and only sends back the file related changes to our Jenkins. Then we have to update our package repository, so we're executing an apt get update as a next step. Then we set up here the chef handler to use the chef handler Jenkins gem and we configure here our Jenkins callback URL. The chef will send the reports to this URL. Then we want to make sure that the Tomcat and the Java is installed, so we install them. And we also want to define a Tomcat service using the service chef resource. And we want to have the Tomcat related packages installed as well. We want to delete the old traceability var if it's there. And here comes the most important part. Grab the file from our Jenkins and put it in the Tomcat web apps directory. This is done via the remote file chef resource. We can define many additional options and parameters here like the owner, the group, the file mode, and the source. The source is the URL of the artifact we want to use. In our case, it is always the last successful build artifact. After retrieving a file, we are restarting the Tomcat service in order to reread the configs and our newly deployed traceability war. A more realistic scenario would be asking our Jenkins to deploy the artifact to S3 or to a Nexus repository and grabbing this artifact from there. But to simplify this demo, I ended up recruiting the traceability war from the Jenkins itself. Okay, so it's time to put everything together. I have already installed the Jenkins with the required plugins, like the Git plugin or the Chef Tracking plugin and its dependencies. So, but you can install it uh, using the plugin manager, of course, in Jenkins. And now I'm going to start up our Jenkins. It's booting up. It will listen on my localhost 8080. It's up and running. Let's see. Here we go, we have it. Now let's create a job using script and the Jenkins job template. So we don't need to create it manually. For this, we will use the Jenkins CLI command and the job template. But first, we have we need to grab the Jenkins CLI, which is shipped in Jenkins. But I have a script for that. We can just uh, get CLI. We have it, and then just create the jobs. We just have to run the create jobs command, which will be using a predefined Jenkins config as a template. And okay, now let's see our Jenkins. Success, job is here. Show you the config, this job config. Oops. Okay, in this demo, our Jenkins job is using a Git repository from a previous webinar, which is a very simple Hello World Maven project. Uh, the job will compile this Java code and create a traceability war as an output. And at the very end of the config, we explicitly tell Jenkins to archive the traceability war. Um, when the artifact is saved, the fingerprint is automatically created. And Jenkins is executing the MD5 sum function and attaches this MD5 sum to this file. Or just let's say it saves it to its MD5 database. I like to mention that all the scripts using this webinar will be shared with everyone in a few days in a blog post after the webinar so you don't have to explicitly ask for it. So it's time for us to run the build. Okay, it's running. It's compiling the Java code. Done with the compiling, and it's finished. And we can see that it, it has created a traceable Javar artifact. And if we click on this ident fingerprint icon, then we can see the traceable Javar artifact details, and we can see the MD5 hash in the right corner. Now that the build is finished and the artifact has been produced, it's time to start up our Vagrant box. So let's do that. I'm just running Vagrant up, which will start up my halted machine. It 
takes time, a few seconds. It's great, it's for running the port, setting up the IP address. It's up and running. And now I can run the Vagrum provision, which will run the cookbooks on the server. We will see that it's uploading the cookbooks to the in memory chef server. And if chef is not installed, and it installs it, but I have already run this before, so it's installed. You can see that it's up uploading the cookbooks. And it's started, it has just started Chef. And you can see the Chef execution, execution steps in the logs. So you can see that it's now loading the cookbooks. And it uh, enabled the chef handler. It deleted. It deleted the traceability var, and then it grabs uh, the remote file from our Jenkins, places it into the webhouse directory, and restarts the Tomcat service. And at the very end, you can see the, the generated report in a, in a JSON JSON in JSON format. So this is being sent back to our Jenkins. Uh, you can see that only the chef resource file and uh, remote file related uh, changes were generated into this report. And we can even see the MD5 hash of the traceability order as well. So now we can go back to our Jenkins and check the artifact page. So just refresh it. And wow, we have a new, new table here. And we can see that uh, this traceable devoir has been deployed to this location on this host uh, 50 seconds ago and it was using the underlying default chef environment so it's pretty great if we rerun this vagrant provision again because we are removing the file it will deploy it again so we will see uh, another line in our table another row okay and chef is now running doing its job it's enforcing things and almost ready and done so let's refresh it again you can see oh yes it has been deployed three seconds ago to the same location uh, and this is only displayed twice because we have removed the file uh, I should mention a very important requirement that the infrastructure should be able to talk back to our Jenkins. It is mandatory. So if you have firewalls on AWS security groups set up, don't forget to allow the communication between the servers and Jenkins. Thank you.